Hello and welcome to another day of Living with Spina Bifida. I have been getting a lot of different questions, but they also could be in the same group of information. So I thought I would answer a varying array of questions in one video. We're still on the boring mumbo jumbo and medical things of this birth effect, but I guess it is mostly medical information because it's a disability, it's a birth defect. You're going to be surrounded by doctors, you're going to be surrounded by medical equipment. It's just part of the deal. So, I have been asked what each level of the spine comparing to the injury what happens what is affected what goes on what you are looking at right now is the spine and just like in the video we are starting at the top and working our way down you can use this as a guide to each level or you could just get an idea of where each level is at for each injury spot. So we will start from the top of the spine and work our way down. Now you have the very base of the spine, the very top, where it's pretty much almost connected to the brain. So you have each little notch of the spine is considered a letter slash number. So each little column has their own little set thing. So that's where the injuries are. So if you hear, oh, I'm an L4, L5, that's where their injury on their spine is. The same goes for any injury where paralysis happens. So C1, C2, C3, and C4, it doesn't look like really anything happens. Um, I don't know if there is an injury there, then you just don't survive or just, I don't know. I don't understand why there's nothing from C1 to C4. But starting at C5, you're still at the higher part above the shoulder blades where your spine is. C5, um, you have elbow flexors and partial upper extremity function that is affected. So your arm doing all sorts of this and that would be affected. Uh, C6, your wrist extensions and uh, you would be able to stand with a stander slash orthotics so going like this and extending your extremities there you wouldn't be able to do that so well and you would be able to stand with either a stander which is basically sometimes it's in your wheelchair and if you have a power chair Sometimes it's its own thing altogether, but it stands you up for you, basically. And then you could also use orthotics, which are AFOs or KHAFOs or braces, as a lot of people like to call them. And they basically, I will show you in another video what mine looks like. Mine's pretty simple and small, but some of them can go from just the ankle for support. It's a piece of plastic, basically like a brace or like a cast it's a brace but it's like a cast but it comes on and off whenever you want it to come on and off and it supports your lower extremities so you have one that can support just the ankles you have one that can go all the way to the knee and support the whole leg to your knee and you'll have other ones that go all the way up to your hips and they will support the whole lower half and it will help you support yourself on the lower half and for people that can walk 
or people that can slightly walk and it just helps them give a little bit extra there in the lower extremities and C7 elbow extensors extensors so you might not be able to bend your elbow as, as much and then the C8 finger flexors you're not going to be able to move your fingers very well so between all of those levels there may be a combination of things affected just like any level just because you are at a certain level doesn't mean all of these are going to happen it doesn't mean it might mean other things are going to happen it's a snowflake disability for a reason because every single person is different T1 we're getting to the lower area but mid so between your shoulder blades and your lower back T1 not really affected it doesn't look like anything happens there you have in T2 you have complete upper upper extremity function so you'll be able to do a whole lot of that and whatnot T3 through 8 you will be able to stand with a stander or a th or orthotics as well. T4, there is possible exercise ambulation. So depending on the person, they will be able to move enough to do extreme things like running or uh, walking a lot. I don't know. T5, T6 doesn't really get affected it looks like. T7, you have partial function of trunk muscles. Your trunk is your torso area, so you'll be able to bend and bend and do all that fun stuff. Um, T9 to T12 is exercise ambulation again, and I'm not really sure what that means. I'm just assuming that you'll be able to maybe lift weights, push-ups, all those sorts of things. Um, now we're getting to the lower, a little bit lower, but still in the middle. So now T10 to L2, your bladder is going to be sympathetic input from hypogastric nerve. So your bladder is going to be a little bit affected. And I know quite a lot of people with spina bifida that have, um, bladder issues including myself but like I said before I can wean myself off of catheterizing but I still have issues where I can't hold it for very long at all um, if I try to hold it I'm gonna go where I am so I'm sure that would help if I would catheterize but I can deal with it I'm just that kind of person where I'd rather just deal with the problems than solve them with a different thing. Maybe I'm lazy. I don't know. But like I said before, I just pee a lot more than a normal person. So, T11 is some function of trunk muscles. So, you would be able to use your trunk muscles a lot easier to like sit up, or hold yourself up, and whatnot. T12 to S5, your sexual functions vary. I'm going to make a whole other topic about this at some point, but a lot of people always question whether or not people with spina bifida can have sex. Are they sexually active? Uh, can they have children? You know, do they work down there? And some people work perfectly fine, normal, no problems whatsoever. Other people, maybe they have a little less feeling down there. Maybe things don't work like they would want to. And then other people just can't bear children. They can't make children. It, it all varies like anything in this 
birth defect. So I will make a whole other video on sex altogether. It'll be a grown up discussion, but it's got to be talked about. Anyways, now we're getting to the L's, going to the lower level. Um, L1 is complete trunk function, exercise ambulation, sometimes household ambulation. So they're adding household now. So apparently each activity has its own category. So they're going to be able to exercise normally and somewhat do household activities. But everyone is different, and just because you're in a wheelchair, just because you can't walk, just because you have to do it differently, it doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means you got to do it another way, and it might take a lot longer than it normally would. But that will be another discussion for another day as well. Uh, L2, hip flexor muscles present, exercise ambulation, and household Ambulation. L3, knee extensors or quadricep muscles present. Household ambulation, possible community ab ambulation. I don't know what that means, honestly. Obviously, we are human beings and we can be out in the community. So I'm not really sure what that means. But going to the mus quadricep muscles present. Uh, like I said before, my right side is completely normal for my leg. I can flex, I can move, I can bend, I can twist. Anything I need to do, I can feel on my right side. My left side, I can flex a little bit on the upper part, but getting down on, below the knee, I can't move my feet, I can't move my toes, I can feel sporadic touches. I can feel temperature for the most part. Sometimes it takes me a little while to figure out that there is temperature there. But it, it works pretty good. It does okay for holding me up. Gives me my balance. So, next we have L4. Medical knee flexors present. Ankle dorsiflexors and three-fifths strength. We're getting stronger the lower we go. And now we're getting to closer to me. I'm an L4, L5. So L4 to S5, community ambulation. I'm g I apologize. I'm going to have to look up what this community ambulation is. Like I said, we're not very organized in the life of spine bifida. So it's going to be all over the place. But... It's fun to just be normal and just be, make mistakes. Just, it's another perspective of another person. So we are learning together some of this. Next we have L5, may walk with or without crutches in the home. I walk without crutches. I've never really used crutches except once when I bruised my pelvis because I fell down on the ice. But I, like I said before, I use a brace for my left ankle to support it. And I don't use anything other than my own self when I'm around the house. And when I'm out of the house, I use my wheelchair for the most part, depending on where we're going. If it's going to be just a quick visit to a store, if it's going to be somebody else's house, I'll walk. It just depends on the day, how I feel, what's going on with my body that day. But I'm pretty self-sufficient when it comes to moving about. No matter how I move about, I do it pretty okay. So my level is L4, L5. So it's just above... My butt crack, basically. My tailbone. S1, hip abductors, uh, three-fifths strength. S2, hip extensors, four-fifths strength. Ankle, plantar flexors, that's 
the foot and whatnot. Three fifth strength may walk with or without crutches. S2, your at through S4, your bowel and bladder function varies. Bladder parasympathetic, sympathetic input from the pelvic nerve, somatic input from podendal nerve to urethral sphincter. Medical words, not so great with those. But like I said before, I am also affected with my bowels. Uh, it seems like even if I have the highest of fiber diets and I am extremely hydrated and I do just about everything I can think of other than a complete clean out every single day, I'm always backed up. I know you don't want to hear that, but it's true. I still have pooping issues. S3, all muscle activity may be within normal limits. S4, nothing happens. And S5 and above, be aware of signs and symptoms of shunt malfunction and tethered spinal cord. We're getting down to the very bottom, which is on the tailbone. Literally on the tailbone. So, basically, nothing really gets affected too terribly with The lower levels. Now you know what the different levels do. I will hopefully add a visual into this video so then you can read along, see what I'm talking about, and get a little bit more knowledge in ya. And I'm hoping to get the next video done as fast as I can. This is going along really well. I'm really happy with this. So, like I said, keep sharing this video. Keep asking me questions. Keep sending in those comments. Keep doing what you're doing. This is going to be great. I'm really excited for this channel because that's all I want to do. I want to spread awareness. I want to spread knowledge to people with spina bifida, to people without it, to people that want to know are a little bit curious so that's what we're here for spread it around share it with anyone that you think would need to know what's going on with spina bifida so until next time <laughs>